ഹരി ഓം ലെസ്റ്റാണ്ട് വിത്ത് ദ പ്രേയർ ഓം സമസ്ത ജനകല്യാണി നിരതം കരുണാമയം നമാമി ചിന്മയം ദേവം സദ്ഗുരും ബ്രഹ്മവിദ്വരും വസുദേവസുതം ദേവം കംസചാനൂരമർദ്ദനം ദേവകീ പരമാനന്ദം കൃഷ്ണം വന്ദേ ജഗദ്ഗുരും ത്വമേവ മാതാ ച പിതത്വമേവ ത്വമേവ ബന്ധുസ്യ സഖാത്വമേവ ത്വമേവ വിദ്യാദ്രവിടം ത്വമേവ ത്വമേവ സർവം അമദേവ ദേവ ത്വമേവ സർവം ഗുരുദേവ ദേവ ഹരി ഓം വി ആർ നൗ ഡൂയിങ് ദി ദി നൈൻ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഓഫ് പഞ്ചദസി ഓഫ് വിജാരണ്യ വേ ഇസ് ഡിസ്കസിങ് നൗ ദി മെഡിറ്റേഷൻ ഓർ ധ്യാന ദീപം ഓർ മെഡിറ്റേഷൻ ഓൺ ദി അബ്സല്യൂട്ട് നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദ റിയാലിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ഹി ഇസ് നൗ ഡിസ്കസിങ് ദി സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ടു എ യുനീക് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ വേ ദ സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ഹാസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് ദാറ്റ് ബൈ ശ്രവണം അണന്നം ദാറ്റ് അഹം ബ്രഹ്മാസ്മി സോ ഹി ഹാസ് ബോത്ത് ദി പരോക്ഷ ജ്ഞാനം and also learn mahavakya vichara so in principle he has the knowledge that vedanta can give so there is nothing much vedanta can do and it has done its purpose yet the result is not there so people listen to vedanta for many years and still claim that i have not realized so realization they think is something to happen or something to be done or something that is going to happen in future or they are exper- are expecting some kind of experience and that's why they are called that aham brahmasmi is is some kind of a unique experience that they want to realize through mahavakya vichara so unfortunately they have not really understood the import of the vedanta even though it says you are that and gnanam is the solution to the problem problem being i do not know who i am and i don't have the i take myself what i am not as i am and i take the world as real and therefore ishvara therefore jiva jagat and ishvara triad is the one that i am in the transactional world and i want to experience or i want to see the god or i want to experience the god or i want to experience brahman and what should i do and there are different techniques that have been described on people have different notions and one of the notions is that i have to go beyond the on the mind so who has to go beyond the mind and who realizes is always a puzzling question for many and people say it will happen if i go beyond the mind it will happen what will happen so it is a the a not clear understanding of it is the mind that is required go beyond the mind is go beyond the wrong motions of the mind that i am this i am this that means the mind along the senses are going out for experiences now it's not some experience because in any experience we have three one is the experiencer and experience and experiencing or the means of experience so when i am experiencing i am seeing the world i am a knower and the world is an object of my knowledge and the means of knowledge either pratyaksha pramana or through the laukika shabda pramana i may be able to know what is the state of the world by hearing from the dependable person i can hear and come to know what's happening in afghanistan or some other place which is far away beyond my sense and input there i cannot use logic i can use the apta vakyam a dependable person like a reporter assuming that he is reporting what is the state of affairs and this is called laukika the shabda pramana but i can confirm whether he we can depend on him if i go there and see myself so the pratyaksha pramana is a prabala pramana a strong pramana compared to shabda pramana 
because Sabda Pramana also can be validated or invalidated by Pratyaksha Pramana if the object of knowledge is validatable by Pratyaksha Pramana. Now we are coming to the, the uh, object which is not, cannot be uh, confirmed by Pratyaksha Pramana. Why? Because it is not something that I can see or I can hear and all that. Why? It is because it's infinite. So therefore it's aprameyam. It cannot be known through any means of knowledge that I am familiar with. So it is not an objective knowledge. So even looking for Brahman objectively is also a problem. So what should I do? Therefore Vedanta makes you that in order to appreciate what the, the nature of Brahman, which is infinite, which cannot be described, at the same time Vedanta is describing, which cannot be known by the mind, at the same time mind is required to know. So how can this be possible? That's exactly what Vedanta understands and appreciates and also explains. So it is not the mind that is going after object after objectification that mind cannot know so when it says it's beyond the mind the beyond the mind and senses because mind is habituated to know only the objects that can be sensed or that can be inferred by based on the anumana pramana or can be known through laukika sabda pramana laukika, laukika means worldly the news about the things that I can depend on, as we said, about reporters. So therefore, that kind of mind that is habituated in knowing that, that mind cannot know. But at the same time, I had to use the mind only, because that's the only instrument for knowledge. Therefore, even that knowledge which cannot be known through objectification, Vedanta points out by using a, a words which takes the mind beyond the words. So even though no word can reach, even though no speech can reach, even though the mind cannot reach, so that which mind goes and comes back, so that yadgatvana nivartante, that which is yatovacho nivartante aprapya manasasaha, vacha yatovacho, either speech can go there, that means I cannot speak about it, I cannot discuss about it, I cannot define about it. So, eto vacho nevartanti, aprapya manasasaha, along with the mind also. So, mind, that mind which is only habituated to understand objective knowledge, that mind is not suitable. So, what kind of mind is required? A mind that is well prepared for this kind of subtle inquiry. Therefore, Vedanta insists that first you have to prepare the mind, therefore chitta suddhi, purification of the mind is required. How do I get purified? That's why you have to go through karma yoga, upasana yoga, etc. What Bhagavad Gita as a yoga shastra describes, before we get into jnanam, uh, you need a mind that is qualified to inquire. So, karma yoga and the Upasana Yoga are for Jnana Yoga Yogyata Siddhartam. That means they prepare the mind for Jnana Yoga. So how do I get Moksha? Moksha, there is no different paths here. And what J. Krishnamurti calls, truth is a pathless land. So the state, everybody repeats that statement. But what does that really mean? So how, how am I going to gain that one? So you cannot gain if it is a pathless land. But at the same time, I am suffering as a, due to samsara. So I have to get rid of the samsara, even though that I cannot reach it, but I need to know how I can get rid of my problems. That is why Vedanta understands this problem. and says when you prepare your mind, your mind becomes subtle enough to discover that which is already there, ever present, Therefore, there is no path because it's infinite. There cannot be any path to infinity. At the same time, for the mind that is not, that is prepared, can use 
Viveka. Viveka means a discriminative intellect. A discriminate of what? Discrimination of Nitya, Anitya, Vastu, Viveka. That which can differentiate Nitya, that is eternal, Anitya, that is ephemeral, that mind which can use using a discriminative intellect viveka i have to discover by rejecting that's called vairagya rejecting what i am not and claiming what i am it is clear claiming of what is already there but i am mistaking something else and therefore mistaken need to be removed mistakes can be removed but in spite of all study of Vedanta, people still say, I have not realized or I have not experienced that Brahman. Therefore, I have to sit in meditation. I had enough of this Vedanta, this intellectual stuff. All people talk about it, but there is nothing substantive that one can gain. So everybody criticizes the Vedantic teaching, saying that it's only teaching and how do I experience people don't talk about it. There is nothing to experience because you are already every time it is that only all the time. So Brahman or Vishnu or Vishwam that Vish, the Vishnu Sahasranama says that first word is Vishwam, Vishnu, Vashatkaraha. So the very statement that Vish, Vishwam, Vishwam means the, the totality that being pointed out is whole universe is nothing but Vishnu and that being mentioned there but we recognize that we are looking for Vishnu somewhere it says Vishnu is Vyapakatvat Vishnu Vyapakatvat means which pervades Vishwam the world whole universe is pervading that it is because of the pervasive nature of that I cannot see so avyaktam, that is beyond the vyaktam, before, beyond the manifestation. Hence Krishna says, maya tatam idam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina. So I am pervading this entire universe in unmanifested form. So I cannot really see Vishnu. But at the same time, the first statement, first two statements define clearly what is the nature of Vishnu. Vishwam, his whole universe itself is Vishwam. So how far I had to go to see Vishnu? Everything that I see is nothing but Vishnu only. But I am ignoring Vishnu. I am only concentrating for, on the external, superficial, the names and forms. And therefore chair is different, table is different, and uh, the food is different, garbage is different. And even though there are differences, but these differences are superficial on the adhisthanam, on the, on the substantive, on the one, the basic foundation on which adhara, on which these are superimposed names and forms. To understand this in simple scientific language, we know fundamentally all material is nothing but electrons, protons and neutrons. So fundamentally, every material is nothing but electrons, photons, and neutrons. So at the same time, when I'm looking at any object, I'm not seeing electrons, photons, and neutrons because they are not invisible for the eyes. But although they are nothing but electrons, photons, and neutrons, but they are assembled in some form to give you a particular, this is a table, and there's a table, chair, this is a gold, there's iron, this is a mud, this is a garbage, there's a food. So these differences among the, among the objects does not negate the fact, but they are only same, nothing but electrons, protons and neutrons. But my vision in transaction is only on the names and forms and the utility. So the nameability involves a knowability, because if I say name, Name involves a knowledge of the object. Therefore, nameability means knowability. That means it is, uh, uh, it can be known, and that which can be known is an object only. A finite things can only be known, and because of it has a form, shape, 
or some property that the senses can measure. But I am getting carried away with the superficial names and forms, ignoring that they are nothing but electrons and protons and neutrons. But for transactional purposes, I have to pay attention to, even though they are superficial names and forms, still garbage is garbage, food is food. I have no problem in discriminating, even though knowledge-wise they are both are same. In the same way, transactionally, I am used to discriminating on that basis, one object from the other, but I am not able to discriminate that the essence of them is nothing but electrons and protons and neutrons. Same way Vedanta says, even electrons, protons and neutrons are only adhisthanam on something else. And what is that something else? It is existence alone was there before creation and itself expresses in terms of existence of electrons, protons, neutrons as well as existence of different names and forms as they modify into objects. So existence which cannot be perceived because existence itself is infinite. Therefore, if the existence is finite, then what is there on the other side of existence? If other side exists, therefore existence has to be on the other side also. So existence has to be infinite. Space itself exists. So existence supports even the space also. And that which is beyond all that is what is pure Sat. And that is there even in the deep sleep state where there is no space and time yet existence is there because deep sleep is is means exist and i am able to sleep when i say i slept very well that means i was there that means our existence of myself was there what else was there in the deep sleep state there's nothing else therefore i alone am and that exactly what the scripture points out you are the totality itself but in the disbelief state, I cannot recognize myself because to recognize it, I need the mind. Mind is folded, therefore no knowledge can take place in the disbelief state. So I need the mind. At the same time, I have to make sure that mind doesn't go out into external things to differentiate one object from the other. I should prepare the mind in such a way that even when the mind goes outside to see different things, in and through different things, mind should have capacity to discriminate what is real in that and what's not real, what is unchanging and what's not changing. Just like as scientists, we'll be looking at every object and have at the same time a vision that these are electron proton neutrons, these are electron proton neutrons. It is the same electron protons everywhere without any distinctions, yet the external distinctions are only superficially imposed on electron protons and neutrons. Now if you go one step further, that the differences in the objects are only superimposed on top of existence and that existence is you are. That's what the teaching of the Upanishad is. And that's how the, the teacher Uddhalaka teaches his son Svetaketu. He says, Aitadatma midagam sarvam tat satyam. What is the idam sarvam? This entire universe that is being pointed out is nothing but they basically say electron, proton, neutrons are even more fundamentally nothing but pure existence alone because that's where the scripture comes in, pramana, where what was there is the fundamentally, what scientists trying to investigate, what is the fundamental material, fundamental material is nothing but pure existence, but how can that be material? That exactly has to be understood through Vedanta Pramana because scientist is trying to investigate what is the fundamental material. But what is happening in the scientist, he is objectifying the universe and looking at the objective world and trying to differentiate what is the fundamental particle by breaking the atom objectively by using objective tools. He wants to find out what is the essence of the universe. But in the very investigation, he's ignoring the investigator, which is also part of the universe. So in the very exclusion of the investigator, who is conscious entity, he cannot investigate unconscious entity as though that is the final. And the very fact that he assumed that the material is the final itself blocks his vision of the reality. 
because he ignores the total problem. Problem is both the subject and object together are in the universe and one cannot investigate only objective objects or objective analysis including electron protons and neutrons using objective tools you cannot investigate the subject which is also part of the equation and the part of the equation is the subject is more fundamental more real than the object because in the deep sleep state i am alone i am there but the world disappeared world is not there so i am more fundamental which never changes and that cannot be investigated through objective tools hence vedanta as a as a pramana shows that you are the totality or tattva masi you are entire universe itself and the whole universe lies in your mind and sustained by your mind and go back into the mind and that is the nature of the teaching but that teaching even though understood clearly in the in the class but not able to put that understanding when transacting in the world that is the fundamental problem and therefore what is the problem is being discussed here in this chapter as the the samvadi brahma samvadi brahma is going to define much more clearly in the shloka that we are going to do number 12 let's do that अयतावस्तु विज्ञानात् अयतावस्तु विज्ञानात् फलं लभ्यत इप्सितं फलं लभ्यत इप्सितं काकतालीयतः योयं काकतालीयतः योयं संवादि ब्रह्म उच्यते संवादि ब्रह्म उच्यते गदर अयतावस्तु विज्ञानात् फलं लभ्यत इप्सितं काकतालीयतः योयं संवादि ब्रह्म उच्यते सो हियर ही इज गिविंग ए व्हाट इज संवादि संवादि ब्रह्म ब्रह्म इज इन्वॉल्व्स ए एरर इन परसेप्शन और एरर इन नॉलेज ब्रह्म इज द वैलिडेटेड नॉलेज ब्रह्म इज इनवैलिडेटेड नॉलेज और ब्रह्म इज ए मिसकंसेप्शन और सम हाइपोथेसिस दैट आई डू नॉट नो येट it is a non knowing is what is called brahma also so here he is defining a samvadi brahma so he gave a different examples from the point of pratyaksha pramana anumana pramana and shastra pramana a example for samvadi brahma and these are this discussed exact ex- exhaustively in the the uttara tapaniya upanishad that he gave a reference to so the whole discussion and the whole chapter is based on the uttara tapani upanishad and in that he gave different examples from the point of pratyaksha pramana samvadi brahma he gave example of a, a light coming from two sources and for two different people and two different places the they see a light coming and they don't see the source and the one place there is a light coming because of the of the diamond which is reflecting the light and the other one because of the so a, a bright light is causing the is a source of that light so and since i am not seeing the source i am only seeing the door is closed and i am seeing the light coming so from a distance i see that there may be money that is giving a diamond that is giving the light in both cases two people are looking at the light and both think that there is a diamond there in one case there is really diamond in the other case it's only a lamp so both run towards it because diamond is valuable so one gets and goes into the place where there is a real diamond so his presumption that there is diamond based on the observation or a hypothesis that it light is due to the diamond is fulfilled even though he didn't know that and that what is called samvadi brahma the other one also thought that the light is due to diamond but there the light is not due to diamond but due to the lamp so when he goes there thinking that it is a diamond he gets disappointed because it's not from the diamond it's from the lamp that is essentially visambadi brahma so these two brahmas are being discussed from the point of pratyaksha pramana from the point of anumana pramana example is given 
where I see that I am looking for a firewood and I see the mist in the morning, a fog in the morning and because when the temperature drops a formation of fog is there and looking at the fog thinking that it is due to smoke and then applying my the logic that I have learned yatra yatra dhumaha tatra tatra agnihi wherever there is there is a smoke there must be fire so I went after for a firewood thinking that the smoke that I am seeing is due to fire it's not smoke it's only a mist or it's due to the fog there but thinking that a hypothesis again that this is a first this is a observation problem uh, this is a smoke and then anumana pramana because of the smoke there must be fire and thinking that i went after the firewood it so happened that there was a firewood not that this the mist is caused by the firewood there's nothing to do with it but it's so happened what's called kakatali yataha kaka means it's incidentally or accidentally what i expected is what happened there so this is also a sambadi brahma and this is called anumana based because logic is wherever there is a smoke there has to be fire not that i'm seeing fire i'm only seeing a smoke but not even smoke it's only a fog so that is an example is given from the anumana pramana a sambadi brahma another example is also taken where i am praying to lord vishnu but i am praying only a figure made up of either clay or wood or a stone but thinking that that is real vishnu i am doing and even though it is not i have not seen vishnu even though i have no concept of vishnu but i have learned from the scripture that he is chaturbhuja and so on so forth the description of vishnu is available from the scriptures because of my faith in this in the scriptures and even though i know that it is not real vishnu i am doing prayer and i may reach as per the scripture says the vishnu also so this is essentially shastriya sambadi brahma this we do normally when we when we put a the salute a flag we know that's not the country but at the same time a piece of cloth we know and some design is there but by proclamation by constitution a declare that this flag represents the nation so once that a constitution the faith in the constitution and the agreement with the constitution establishes the fact that whenever i see a flag and when i, I salute it you not thinking that it is a is a piece of cloth with the, some design but i am saluting the nation that stand for it so that's also sambadi brahma so even though i am saluting a piece of cloth i am saluting the nation even though i am praying the a, a vigraham there a, 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 an idol there i am only praying the lord vishnu and the same way these are essentially called sambadi brahma and this is going to be now defined in this shloka that we said ayata vastu vijnanat so ayata vastu this this is not really true so it's erroneous concept the concept vastu vijnanat and the, from the knowledge of the object the the erroneous knowledge of the object because when i am praying vishnu that it's not really vishnu that i know it's not vishnu at the same time i am praying vishnu in the form of vigraham therefore it is an erroneous preconceived hypothetical statement of that vastu vijnana even though it's not real from the knowledge of the object is not real if see the palam one gains the the desire that is say by praying lord and if i pray for something i will get the result what i want and uh, even though the what i am praying is only a representation or a statue of lord of the lord so even though there is an erroneous knowledge there the result is what i want and that is exactly the upasana means so upasana involves invocation in some form where the form is different from what i am invoking 
So I am invoking the ideal in the form of an idol for Upasana and that's what is being discussed here. So ayata vastu vijnanat palam labhyata ipsitam. So ipsitam palam labhyata. So desire the result one can gain even though the, the worship is to a statue, worship is to a vigraham. But I am only worshipping the Lord who is up there. So ayata vastu vijnana ipsitam that and it's called in normal language kakatali yataha it's it's a sambada brahma uchchate so kakatali yataha labhyate yaha ayam sambadi brahma uchchate so this is called the coincidentally or mere coincidence the mere coincidence as though labhyate yaha ayam so whatever one wanted is gained by this so that's why Krishna says, Yo yo yam yam tanur bhaktaha sraddha yarchitu marchati tasya tasya salam sraddham ame vavidaham yaham. So yo yo yam yam tanur bhakta in whatever the, the whoever, whoever he may be, in whatever, whatever form he worships me. And I give blessing in that form, in that, in that form alone. So I can invoke in any form because the formless form is, is infinite, but is in the form also. Therefore, invocation can be done in any form, and that is what the scriptural statement. So I should have a full faith in order to do prayer also. So it's called Kakataliyataha Yoyam Samvadi Brahma Uchate. So gaining the result. Even though that's not really true, but by, by worshipping that, I'm getting what I want. Therefore, yipsita phalam labhyata. Whatever I want is here, can be gained, even though I am doing something not really uh, correct or the, based on the real knowledge. That's what upasana is. Let's do 13. Swayam Brahmo Pisambadi Swayam Brahmo Pisambadi Yada Samyak Palapradaha Yada Samyak Palapradaha Brahma Tatu Pasanapi Brahma Tatu Pasanapi Tata Mukti Palaprada Tata Mukti Palaprada So Yada Swayam So even though by itself Yada Swayam by itself, yada, as it is Brahma, even though it is Brahma, even though there is an erroneous conception, even though my hypothesis can be wrong also, so when I'm investigating accidentally, I may end up the right result, even though the, the hypothesis may be wrong, but accidentally, kakataliyam, I may end up getting a result. And that's what being is discussed here. So the end result is right result. That's what essentially Sambhaji Brahma is. End result is a right result. In the case of the example where I went for a diamond and think, thinking that it's diamond and I got a diamond because I wanted a diamond. In the other example, Anumana, I wanted a firewood even though my assumption was wrong. I went after it and I got it. And in the case of Vishnu or any Vigraharadhana, I am worshipping, although the Vodgraham is not really Vishnu, even Vishnu is obviously should be Chaitanya Swarupam, conscious entity. This is a, the symbol is not conscious, it is a unconscious entity, iron piece of iron or piece of cloth or piece of wood or piece of even turmeric powder. But I am invoking the presence of the Lord and get what I want. And that's what is called the Swayam Brahmopi Sambadi Yadha Samyak Palapradaha. I am getting Samyak Palam. The, the complete Palam, the fruit of that is what is gained and that is called Sambadi Brahma. Now he goes, after giving example, now he goes, the same thing can happen under Brahma Tattvam. So Brahma Tattva Upasanapi Tadha Mukti Palaprada. So even though the, uh, 
the uh, object is I am doing an upasana, Brahma Tattvam Upasana Api, though even though I am doing upasana on Brahma Tattvam, Brahma Tattvam is the infinite nature of the Lord. So even though I am doing upasana, Tata Mukti Palam Prada, even then I can get the result Mukti liberation and therefore what is though even though erroneous knowledge involved in because why Brahman is infinite. I am doing a upasana. Upasana involves a, a, a triad. Triad means the triputi. Upasaka different from the upasya and uh, there is a means of upasana either through the upasana involves the mental projection of something and meditation on that. So there is a meditator and a meditator and a meditation. So that's called triad. So even though that is triad is involved, I will end up with the mukti liberation because of this Sambhadi Brahma is what is being, is can be as examples that are given by Kakataliyam. Yeah, accidentally or incidentally, I will end up what with what I want. So even in the Brahma Tattva Upasana is can be done by a Upasana even though Brahma Tattva involves clear understanding of the totality of Brahman. So the bottom line is even though there is an uh, the erroneous delusion and in the very process of Upasana I am I am objectifying the Lord or I'm objectifying the Brahman, the very upasana involves an objectification, but through mind I am doing it and what type of upasana is going to discuss, because it's not any upasana, it is a particular upasana, why? Because to remove some obstacles, adrushta obstacles, unknown obstacles, unseen obstacles. So people, they understand it, but they don't understand it at the same time. Why? Because the understanding involves recognition. The recognition is not there because of some obstacles. So obstacles can only be removed through proper upasana or proper meditation on the nature of the reality. So this is all that introduction to Samvadi Brahma, even application to Brahma Tattva Upasana. So he justifies in the next sloka. Vedante Bhyo Brahma Tattvam Vedante Bhyo Brahma Tattvam Akhandai Karasatmakam Akhandai Karasatmakam Parocham Avagam Yaitadu Parocham Avagam Yaitadu Ahamasmi Tyu Pasati Ahamasmi Tyu Pasati So together Vedante Bhyo Brahma Tattvam Akhandai Karasatmakam Parocham Avagam Yaitadu Ahamasmi Tyu Pasati So here he is giving, defining that the, the problem and what need to be done and a solution can be found based on the, the Uttaratapani Upanishad statement here. So it, So what should be done, this kind of, he says. So can I sit down and do, say, I am, who am I, who am I inquiring? Does it give the knowledge? Or can I discover the truth by inquiring into who am I without studying the scriptures? And here is the answer to that question also. He says, first, you have to study Vedanta. There is no shortcuts there. Therefore, Srotavyaha, Mantavyaha, <laughs> Jasitavyaha is a must. So before I sit for Brahmo Pasana or Aham Brahmasmi, it's not really Upasana, it's only to remove some obstacle, but obstacle is you don't get knowledge by Upasana. So one has to be careful here. By sitting meditation, I'm going to gain the knowledge that Aham Brahmasmi is not possible because meditation is not a means of knowledge. Meditation is not a Pramana. So meditation, the pramana is only Vedanta and for that one has to listen to the, 
one has to listen to the scriptures. Therefore, it says, Vedante Bhyaha Brahma Tattvam Akhandai Karasatmakam. So, by study of Vedanta and understanding the nature of Brahman, which is of the Akhandai Karasam, means unbroken, undifferentiated, that Rasam is Ananda Rasam, and means it is pure of bliss or Ananda. Ananda means not some happiness, something. It is Swarupa Lakshanam. That means uh, it is nature itself is Ananda. That is the infiniteness is Ananda here because limitless is Ananda and any other limited Anandas are only reflected Ananda. My nature is Ananda Swarupam. Says so Rasatmakam and Parotsham Avagam Yaitadu. So I studied Vedanta, understood everything. So Parotsham Avagam Yaitadu. So having understood the, the knowledge by listening to scriptures for a prolonged length of time, Aham Asmidi Upasate, Aham Asmidi, I am that Brahman has to be done Upasana because I am not able to claim myself I am Brahman because of some obstacles. We we'll go into this more details in the, the in the next talk, and we'll stop here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om